Hey, it's Tina Forsyth here. I remember back in 2010, this was the year where my business officially became bigger than me. So up until that point, I started my business in 1999 and up until, you know, 2009, 2010, it was really just me doing my thing. I was working as a solopreneur. I was being hired directly for various types of consulting work. And most notably, I worked as an online business manager during that time frame. When I started to shift my business around 2009 and officially into 2010, I was shifting into a training and consulting company. This was the stage of growth where it was no longer just me. I had a team of people working with me. I hired my own online business manager at that time. Uh, the business started becoming bigger and purposely so. This is exactly what I wanted to have happen. It was the reason why I made these changes. But what I didn't recognize at the time was how much this was going to trigger my control freak tendencies. So I suspect if we were in a room together and I was to ask you, you know, all right, how many of you? have control freak tendencies. I mean, really, I would not be the only person raising my hand. The truth is, that's a big part of what gets you to a certain level of success. The fact that you want things done a certain way, you have high standards, you really wanna see things done well, you wanna keep a, a track of what's happening and when, and all of that. That tendency, that drive, can be a huge part of what's allowed you to create success in your business. And to a certain point, it can serve you quite well. My control freak tendencies, that inner control freak, served me very well for the first 10 years of my business. And because it was just me doing my thing, it was all very manageable. But once I hit that stage in about 2010 there, where everything was becoming bigger than me, this was the stage where my control freak kicked in kicking and screaming. The business was becoming bigger. There were more people involved. There was a whole heck of a lot more work being done. And I was not, nor could I be the person to do it all. And so what started happening is I would wake up in the middle of the night having these little panic moments. You know, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and my head would start going, oh my gosh, did this get done? Did that get done? Oh my goodness, I sent this email to that person. I didn't hear back from them. I'm not sure about this piece. We totally forgot about that. Ah, my brain would start swimming. And then I wouldn't be able to go back to sleep. I like to call that flushing toilet brain. You know, things were going around and around and around and around. And what would happen? I would wake up and I would go to my laptop and I would send an email tsunami to my team, basically expressing everything in my head. Did this get done? Did that get done? What happened here? We forgot about this. Boom, ba-doom, 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 ba-doom. The fact of the matter is, I had no way to actually feel in control of my business. So here's the thing. You need to embrace your inner control freak. You just can't let her run the show. The fact of the matter is, that part of who you are, the fact that I have this control freak inside of me, um, it's so important. It's still important to me. There's no such thing as at a certain stage of growth saying, forget it. I'm going to stop being this way because here's what will happen. If you try to forget it, usually what happens is you swing totally the other way to the other end of the spectrum. You're like, I'm just going to, you know, assume everything's great. I'm not going to bother, you know, worrying about stuff. I'm going to basically that's a form of abdicating success. And I call that being an ostrich instead of being a control freak. That doesn't work either, right? That doesn't work either. You can't be too overly involved in everything or try to be too overly involved in everything. Likewise, you can't just shove it all to the side and in essence, stick your head in the sand, cross your fingers and hope it's all gonna work out. Neither one of those is healthy for you or the business. But how do you find this middle ground? When you are a control freak like me, how do you find this middle ground where everything doesn't have to be on your shoulders, everything doesn't have to be coming to you and through you, but you can still you can still maintain control of your business. You can still keep a finger on the pulse of exactly what's going on. You can still maintain high standards for the level of work that's being done. You can still make sure that the right things are getting done in the right time frame. This is where teamwork, where my virtual office tool has been an absolute godsend for me. If I look back, you know, as I look back on my business journey, the one thing that's made probably one of the bigger differences, there's different things that have, of course, but one of them that's made the biggest difference, one of them that's allowed me to work, you know, 30-ish hours a week, give or take, to not work weekends, to be able to spend the majority of my time 
in the space that I want to be spending my time in, serving my clients, growing the business, leading the company, uh, being able to not have those middle of the night moments anymore. I don't wake up in the middle of the night anymore worried about whether or not stuff's getting done. I wake up in the morning, you know, pretty clear as to what we're working on, me and the team both. I still have a team of amazing women that work with me. There's three, three women that work with me day in, day out in the company. And we're all on the same page. We all know what's going on. We all know where everything's at and the status of everything. You know, are we perfect with it? Heck no. But more often than not, I feel at peace about how my business is being run. I can take a vacation and not have to check in and know that things are still getting done in the right way, in the right time, and so on. And truthfully, all of this is because I took everything out of my head, I stopped trying to run my business out of my inbox, and we put it into our virtual office tool. Now, the one I use and recommend and love is Teamwork Projects. If you're interested in that, just go ahead and click the link with this video or you can go to tinarecommends.com and there's some information on that page as well about Teamwork. There's different types of tools out there. I love and recommend Teamwork. I have a great training, really affordable training you can plug into if you're interested in learning more about it. But regardless of what tool you use, you need to get everything out of your head. You need to get everything into a space where you don't carry the weight alone anymore. You need to also put it in a space where you can still keep a finger on the pulse of what's going on. See, what happens when, when I talk about you can't run your business out of an inbox, what happens is you may have an amazing team of people around you, but what's missing is that middle ground, that place where everybody's meeting together. When you use your inbox and you send email tasks out to people, what happens is you don't know what happens on the other end. You might have the best people in the world, they do amazing work, but you send them a bunch of tasks, you don't know if they received it, you don't know if they opened it, you might be able to see if they opened it, but you're not gonna know where it is on their list of priorities, you're not gonna know whether or not they actually accomplished it. See, what would happen when I used to send those email tsunamis in the middle of the night uh, and wake up in the morning and my team had responded, more often than not, the work was done. It wasn't a matter of my team not doing great work because they were doing great work. They were amazing, but I didn't know it was getting done. I couldn't see it was getting done. I had no place to look and say, oh, okay, that's done, that's done, that's done, that's done. I'm not seeing anything about this. Let me check in and see what's going on there. Oh, you know what, this is coming up too. Let me make sure I pop it into so-and-so's list so they know to take care of it by Friday. Boom, ba-doom, ba-doom, ba-doom. When you use email only, you're sending it out into the ethers. You have no idea what the heck's going on there. And as much as I love my team and love my people, you can't build a business on people. You have to build a business on systems. People are amazing. People are unreliable. Systems are, are reliable. Systems are reliable. So you want a space where you and everybody else in the business can rely on, can look to, and can know what's going on for you. This more so than anything has brought me peace of mind. And I wanted to share this video with you today because I know tools like this, a lot of times people resist them. You know, you resist getting a virtual office or a project management tool. It feels like something unnecessary, or maybe you just don't like it. Maybe you just don't like the tech. You don't like the systems. You're like, ew, yuck. I don't want to deal with that, or I don't need that, or that's just for the big guys. If you want peace of mind, if you're tired of the chaos, if you're tired of waking up in the morning, not knowing what the heck's going to land in your inbox and never knowing whether or not things are getting completed, not knowing whether or not your team is doing things or not, and having no real way to be able to check in on that other than flat out asking them. And even asking them, they may not be available when you want and need to connect with them. You know, if you're feeling that space of just being in uncertainty and chaos all the time and really truly not knowing what the heck's going on in your business, that is not fun. We need to embrace the inner control freak, but don't let her run the show. Build in a virtual office, build in a project management tool for you to be able to have that space, to keep in touch with what's going on and to, and to really allow that inner control freak to breathe. Ah, it's all good to indulge and, con and continue to be in control, but not, not have that kick into high gear. 
and become a challenge for you. So if you're interested in this, I mean, I just did this awesome affordable little training on using teamwork projects. Likewise, if you want to grab it, tinarecommends.com again will take you to the page with links and such. Those are links to my affiliate program. And if you do purchase an upgraded version of teamwork, I have a really cool little gift I want to give you as a thank you, because of course I would get an affiliate fee if you did that. So all the details and such are on that page. And again, here's to bringing a little bit of peace into the business. Here's to continuing to grow and expand on a really solid foundation, regardless of what you're building towards, regardless of what that looks like for you. I assure you, you do not have to be living and operating in crazy land. It's just not the way it needs to be. So until next time, it's Tina Forsyth. Take care. Bye now.